these are alcohol wipes. They are used to get all that pesky oil off of your face so that your makeup will adhere better. So as my very smart mother has reminded me, I should do that first. Where do you get those? I don't know, Mom. Where do you get those? Well, you can go to the drugstore. Or a local pharmacy, which is the way you're supposed to call it now. Yes. And, uh, the drugstore. Yeah. <laughs> the drug. No, yeah, that's a <laughs> CBD oil store. No! Mom! Well, okay. Walgreens, CVS, things, places like that, Walmart. And they're in little packages. For... Don't put it too close to your eyes because it'll burn. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Found that out for you. I suffer so you don't have to. It's my job. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. <laughs> You're welcome. So anyway, my hands are warm because there are little little bits of wax in here. It's all mixed together. But the wax, when it's cold, well, we all know wax when it's cold is pretty solid. But as it warms up, it gets more pliable and more spreadable. So you don't need a cheese knife to put your makeup on. So... <laughs> Now, knowing how much is enough, it takes practice to figure out. Let's it took me. Let's take a close up. This is a glob. American, <laughs> not metric, glob. Uh, it's probably about. Uh, Teaspoon? I was going to say it's about a half inch. Glob. Thick. Okay. And it covers three fingers. About halfway down the fingertip, if you want an exact measurement. Now, this isn't going to cover my whole face. This is just enough to start because it's way easier to add more than to take too much off. Way easier. So, start with a little little glob. You're going to warm it up. Now, the glob, unfortunately, was a little cold, too. So, we're going to need to warm it up a little extra. Going to add a little more because I'm realizing that this is not enough. How do you know this is not enough? Intuition. Comes with practice. Three years of putting it on every day. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm using regular clown white instead of clown white light because that I'm doing a full white face makeup. However, if you were doing, they do have thinner white. I just, I prefer... It covers better. The old-fashioned way. Yeah, it does cover better. It covers thicker. You don't need as much. Right, ready? Ready. Circus style. <sighs> wow. Gee, that's quick. Yeah, because the longer you wait, the colder it gets. <laughs> it doesn't stay warm for too long. So, yeah. takes longer if you do it a little bit at a time way. So it's easier if I just warm up a bunch of it and just go whip. How was that? Whip. <laughs> now, when other white face clowns put their white on after this step, usually they have red somewhere. So they cut a shape out with a Q-tip or you can always use a baby wipe wrapped around your pointer finger if it's a rounder shape. So I am currently evening it all out. Now usually what happens is when people are done evening it all out. If they have red, they use a Q-tip or wrap their finger around a baby wipe to cut out the shapes that they have to fill in later because people sometimes find if they don't do that, it'll change the color of your paint from red to pink. Now, if you're looking for pink, then hooray, shortcut. If you're not looking for pink, if you want a darker red, you just have to cut that shape out before you powder it. It's a lot easier to cut the shape out before you powder than after. The lines will still be clean if you do it that way. Now, I'm 
I am hitting myself because I deserve it, just kidding, uh, because it makes my makeup not have streaks in it. Wet makeup is difficult to apply for that reason because have you ever put, had too much paint on a paintbrush and then you put it on the page and then it, it, it isn't even, right? It's not very even, it's kind of like lumpy and streaky. And you're like, well, rats, that's not what I wanted. So it's about having the right amount on, on the canvas, right? So you get like a different type of brush and you have to spread it thinner. So you want the right amount of thickness to be white enough, but also not be too thick that it's textured. You don't want to look like a Van Gogh piece with all these peaks and stuff of makeup. I mean, I don't know, maybe you do, but it's not the look I'm going for at the moment. And so as you can see, I keep just grabbing a little dollop just so I can add more a little bit at a time instead of doing it all at once. Because, here we go. It is going to pull at your skin, that's normal, it's a little sticky. Can I get my ears a little bit? It's Ears are up to your discretion, because if they don't show... Or don't if you like, wear a skull cap, or a hood. Then you don't really have to worry about it, but if they're going to show... For me, my whole ear doesn't show, it's just like sometimes if the wind hits me right, my little ear lobe will pop out so we're gonna put a little makeup on that on that earlobe so it's ready to be seen Oof. uh also depending on how cold your makeup is i've heard that you can microwave it not for long not for long at all like very very short amount of time but apparently mom is shaking her head at me and i shouldn't do that but i'm just noticing how th how thick this is Maybe for like five seconds would help. But anyway, apparently that was a bad idea. <laughs> Boss We're says, not endorsing microwaving your makeup. You can do it if you want to, but <laughs> we're not. That is not an endorsement by Priscilla Moosebreaker Originals. Thank you. It is a hypothesis, not a confirmed analysis. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody has done enough research on this for it to be. 100% foolproof. Although we're, you know, being we're fools, fools ourselves. Yeah, we're, there's proof we're fools. Yeah, so. so now, B, once you get that done, do you, like, check the side of your nose and... Why did I miss the side of my nose? A little bit. No. Put on makeup with a partner. It's helpful. <laughs> Actually, I do, uh, when I put my makeup on, if somebody else is around, because I try to do the back of my neck, usually. Uh, in the wig that I'm wearing today, the back of my neck doesn't show, so it's okay. But uh, in my outfit as Wanda, my the back of my neck shows a little bit sometimes, so I have to paint it. But obviously, I can't see it, so I have to uh, ask a friend for help. Okay. So you normally wear glasses. Correct. So are you using a magnifying mirror? I am. Because <laughs> I forgot to bring contacts. But it's important to have a way to get through that if it happens to you. Because maybe your clown wears glasses. It's really hard to put on makeup around your glasses. So... Oh, well, that's a giant pour. That doesn't go away. It does. It's too big. Um, so, some of you may have large pores. I have one that's on my cheek that my mother is very kindly pointing out to me. Uh, it's not going to fill with makeup. I know this. It happens every single time I put my makeup on. However, when I powder it, it will fill. And I don't have to worry about it. So, if you have a pore that is just a little, just a little, little big, it's okay. It will probably fill with powder and it won't be an issue now when I do my bottom lip 
I don't like the regular shape of my lip, so I'm altering it a little bit. Making it more cartoon-like. Mm-hmm. Now this isn't going to be the exact shape because I can still paint over the edges with the black if I want. Black covers. Mm-hmm. And notice how she's like stretching out her lip to get all the lines out of it. I'm telling it for her because it's hard to talk when you're stretching your mouth out like that. But to do that really helps get the makeup into the creases of your lips. Because your lips are like an accordion, right? They go like this. Meep. And then they have all these little windows of space that get closed in. It's kind of like your eyelids. When you open, they're all scrunched. So you wouldn't paint, you wouldn't put your eyeshadow on with your eye open because then you'd have all these lines when you close your eyes, right? So your lip is the same, just vertically. This way. Got it. Or horizontally. I know how to say that. Now, I'm quickly doing my eyelids one last time before I powder because I have been keeping my eye open while putting it on and thusly creasing it like we we're talking about with that accordion analogy. So always pat the parts of your face that Any place are that might crease. Getting creasy. Your cheek, around your mouth, your muzzle area, in between your eyes, crow's feet. Turkey feet, whatever kind of feet you might have. And then pat it all nice and smooth. Now, a part that some people forget is right here. Yeah, that's right a... Right underneath the chin. So remember to check there and right under the ear, too. It gets missed a lot. So I'll, I miss right here really, really often. Everybody kind of should you know, figure out your trouble spots. So you just have to double, triple check, make sure that it's all good. Now I do this, you don't have to do this, but I put whatever's left over back because it's all going on the same face. Okay. And it's less to take off my hands when I have to clean them. If your white isn't absolutely perfect, say it's your first like three, five, seven times that you put it on, it's okay. Remember, we're gonna put stuff over this. So if there's like a little crease here or there, no kid is gonna point at your face and go, hey, you have a line in your makeup. Sorry, Timmy, that's how the world works. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it looks like we're having some te technical difficulties. So I put, here's my powder. It has Color Set Powder by Maron on top. I'm talking funny because I don't want my lips to touch. Uh, I've smoothed out the powder on top so it doesn't have like any little bubbles like that. So it'll go on smoothly. You're going to keep loading the puff as you go so there's always powder on the puff. Yep. And you can tell when you start to run out because it gets a little sticky. It'll, you'll feel the pull of the puff. also using my tongue to push out parts of my mouth to make it easier to powder. Okay, now I have some powder on my hand. I'm going to check for stickiness. Good. Those spots are good. We're going to do top. Now you don't have to powder outside. You can powder in your shower if whoever you live with doesn't get mad about having <laughs> powder everywhere. Powder on their feet when they take a shower and having a little bit of a paste. Not that I would know <laughs> what that's like. Okay. Some spots you just kind of 
careful like on the edge of the bottom of your eye I miss that spot every time every time I do it I always end up with the powder looking a little funny there so I'm still learning maybe someday somebody will put out a video of them powder and I'll go oh that works a lot better than what I'm doing <laughs> and I will be so glad because I always <laughs> seem to have a problem so if any of you have any tips, I'm listening. Okay, we'll finish up and go back inside. Yeah. You know, most people would ask me, hey Julia, why are you moving your eyebrows around before you're putting any makeup on them? Hey Julia, why are you moving your eyebrows around before you put any makeup on them? Because, no, they did not change while I was sleeping, <laughs> but... That is how I know where to put them, is where the muscle is. You can see it. So I have to look where it is, and then I remember exactly where to put my makeup, because I forget every time. Now, if you were trying to do a rounder shape with your eyebrow, I would suggest not using a paintbrush. Because paintbrushes, at least the one I use, have a square end, which helps me because I always draw my eyebrow with a square end. But if you don't want a square end, well, this ain't going to work for you. Pencil? Pencil already has a round tip, so it's easier to have to make a round shape. So it's something. about using the right tools Correct. for the design you're working on. Correct. It's like... You might need to experiment. Hey, I need to pound in this nail. How about I use the handle of the screwdriver? No. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> use the tool that's made for the job. Now I use this one direction for the front. So when I'm starting it, I go this direction, the flat way, right? And then I turn it for when I want to make the thinner line on Perfect. the end. So it's just a little twist. And because it's black, really good black makeup by Miran, or you could use Ben Nye or Krylon, but really good quality grease paint, there's enough pigment in there that it'll go right over the white without any problem. Especially since it's powdered. If it wasn't powdered, it would, it would blend with it and turn gray. Correct. But, but because it's powdered, it's like drawing on paper. Well, kind of, sort of. It's dry and it just goes right over it. Unless you're me and have issues with wet makeup getting caked in your eyebrows. Okay. Because you have thick man eyebrows. It's okay. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> Correct. Sometimes Thanks, Dad. <laughs> you didn't get it from me. Thanks. So sometimes to fix that problem, I do have to powder my eyebrows extra. Like my, my, not my painted on eyebrows, my hair eyebrows. I have to powder them extra because in all these little hairs, the grease paint goes all the way down in here. So it gets stuck and then the powder goes right on the top of the hairs. So it doesn't reach. And then it's like, how is that? <laughs> You don't have to use grease for this step. I'm an overachiever. You don't have to be like me and make yourself suffer like this. But the next part is eyeliner and corner of the eye details. You can use some brands of liquid eyeliner for this. But what I really like is the Ben Nye one, I think, Mom. Goes on like a dream over my powdered white. The pigment is just so intense that it 
has no problem. But I am going to do it old school. Old school. Although I don't know how healthy it is to have this much <laughs> grease caked this close to your eyeballs, but uh, go. Now there are other options to do this. You don't have to use grease paint for this. There is a really nice Van Nuys liquid eyeliner, or if you use a different liquid eyeliner brand that you love, give it a try. Just make sure you use it over the top because on top of grease paint is going to react differently than on your regular skin or your regular base makeup. So I'm just going to use grease because I'm used to it and I like doing things the old fashioned way. So I always make sure I load a lot on the brush because of how long of a line I'm making. The liner you're talking about is the Ben Nye Precision Eyeliner, and that has the uh, felt tip kind of a applicator. Love that felt tip. It works awesome. It's best for the top eyelid, I think. Nice straight, smooth lines. So I'm doing this one strictly the thin direction instead of the wide of the brush. That's actually a face painting brush, isn't it? Yes. This is a paradise brush. I'm not sure which one, though. But it has a little rectangular end. Yep, square end. Mm -hmm. no, and it's a flat brush. And I'm going to curl the edges up to make a little, little smile. You can see it. It's kind of tough to see. But it makes this curl that I make just show up. Hmm. That's definitely an advanced move. I developed it after years of research. Just kidding. Uh, I can't do that move on... Uh, with anything besides grease paint. It just doesn't work because this makes the brush so stiff that it will hold that little U-shape. So as you see, ta-da. Yeah. All right, do the other side. Now the other side. Sometimes if you make a line faster, you don't have time to shake. So I just go, wham! <laughs> I don't think we have a brush for this. That's okay. Ta-da! This is pigment! We're going to put it on my eyelids. But I'm putting this on my eyelids before. We aren't doing this yet. We do this first because if you put this on, the mascara, before you put on your eyeshadow, you will be sad. You will get black stuff all over your hands, and you'll be very upset. So I am cutting that part out of your daily routine. You can be upset another time. 
Now, I start with where I want the most pigment because I like the pigment on the outside going to the inside. So if I put on a little too much, I can just pull it over. So I always like this shape. So now I'm just going to pull it. Like the residue that's what's left on your finger and what's on your eye? Yeah. So it's lighter. Yes. Now that's a Graftobian Shimmer Set is what you have there. And that's the cream in a... It's very creamy. Pretty blue. Comes in a lot of different colors. So it's kind of like a mixture of pulling and patting. Because... You don't want to look like a drag queen. Well, depending on the drag queen. Some of them have better makeup skills than me! <laughs> but... It... Less is more. But it's going to be different because the grease is going to kind of eat it a little bit. Some of the pigment, like this on your regular eyelid, would be crazy. But with the white on it, you have to kind of, you have to play with it a little bit to figure out exactly how much is enough. I just put it where I want the most of it first because that way if I have too much I have somewhere to put the excess. You feel me? Looks good. Like don't just please don't just take a finger full and just go right here cuz you don't you really want it. You always want to take your pigment from the outside more towards the inside cuz otherwise you look like <sighs> Two blue window shutters, just big, thick rectangles. You don't want rectangles, you want a little bit of a fade. It looks a little less abrupt. Because your clowning isn't like it used to be. It's not, you don't have to be all the way from the cheap seats. Alright, that's looking good. Because you want to be able to be seen close up and not be too... Ugh. How was that? Ugh. Set, go. Mascara. It's good to have whatever brand that you like best. I always like really voluminous ones because I don't wear fake eyelashes very often. And I feel like if I just wear enough mascara, I won't need it. Also, fun fact, there are like beauty bloggers that have these hacks of, oh, put put a uh, baby powder on your eyelashes and it'll make your eyelashes bigger for your mascara. Ha! We knew that. We are, we've been doing that for years. <laughs> I have pink stuff. This is Maron Cheek Powder. Now when I have my red hair look and my, well, it's always a red nose, but when I have my my red hair look for Wanda. I usually like to use a darker blush. That's bold red in uh, Miron's cheek. And what you're using right there is wineberry pink. Wineberry. Wineberry pink. Because I just find that reds and reds go better together and pinks and oranges go better together as warmer instead of as harsh as red can be. Also, you have to be really careful <laughs> using red powder on your white face because it, if you do it wrong, it looks really smeary yeah. and it can get blotchy really fast. So you have to just be really careful how you put it on. Now, I like to go like this. I use a brush like this because I'm using a bigger shape. A comma. A big comma. And that it's is more a, like a comet. That, <laughs> that is a uh, small powder brush by Miron. So, to start my comet, I'm going to smile so I feel the apple of my cheek and just kind of poke it, right? Yep, just poking it. You're dragging it just a hair, but not a lot. So, there's this is the, the rock part of my comet. And now, we're going to do the tail. 
right? right. Every, every comet has a tail. So I take the brush and I squeeze it because otherwise it's going to be round, right? And I don't want the whole thing to be round. I want to make a tail. I want it to go beep, taper back. So we're going to squeeze it and then pull it. Pull it over. Now I have to remember, now my smile goes up. So I'm going to make my cheek go up and then down. There's my little, it's my little comet. A little smile comet. There's one. There we go. And now it's on my way across to the other side. Put a little bit on my nose because just in case, if my nose were to fall off at a gig, I, you, I don't want this blank white nose on my face. I want to have like a backup, backup little focal point. So I always have that under my clown nose. So then we're going to do the the rock part. So I'm kind of pulling it always toward the middle. And then the and tail. It's better to use uh, theatrical quality blushes instead of... And now for the piece de resistance. 